It was time to celebrate the Passover festival, and this festival <coughs> had started centuries earlier when the Hebrews uh, were sl as slaves in Egypt. Moses had tried unsuccessfully to get Pharaoh to set his people free so that they could uh, get away from them and just live as they were called to live, but Pharaoh wouldn't let them go. And in a final act, God said that he was sending the angel of death to take the life of the firstborn males of the Egyptians. But to protect the Hebrews, the people were told to smear the blood of a sacrificed lamb on their doorposts and over the lintel. And the night that the angel came, all the Egyptian firstborn males died. But the Hebrews were passed over. And because of this act of God, Moses and his people were set free. And to this day, the Hebrew people, Jewish community, celebrates Passover to remember this mighty act of God. The Passover festival that Jesus attended was just like any other. People were arriving in Jerusalem from all over the known world with families reuniting and friends getting together. Jerusalem was crowded with people. A Roman official was once given the task of counting the number of lambs that were sacrificed uh, for the Passover festival, and he discovered that approximately 250,000 lambs were slaughtered each year. Jewish law required that at least 10 people be serve the uh, the sacrifice of a lamb, which meant that over two and a half million people were in <coughs> Jerusalem each time the Passover was celebrated. Now that's a lot of people in a relatively small space. The people came from the four corners of the earth and they wanted to be there in the holy city to give thanks to God. At the beginning of this particular Passover celebration, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. And by doing so, he made two statements. First, he was declaring that he was coming as their king. And second, that he was coming in peace. Many of the two and a half million people lined the streets and were cheering him on. they have been waiting a long time for the one that God was going to send to deliver them from the bondage of Rome. They were going to have their own king. They'd been waiting for the Messiah. The crowds lined the streets. They placed their garments and palm branches before him, paving the streets to show proper respect and acceptance. And the whole time they shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, can you imagine the scene? Can you imagine how loud it must have been in such a display of excitement and enthusiasm. The people cried out to their savior. Many would have, and many today have a misunderstanding of the word Hosanna. A lot of times we think that it means, you know, hail, but it actually means it has its root in the word for save us, or rescue us. It's a cry for help that people used when they were in distress. And as the people cheered Jesus on, they wanted desperately to be saved from the hardship and turmoil that racked their lives. They felt oppressed and hopeless. So as Jesus rode into Jerusalem, the people cried out, Hosanna, save us, rescue us. They were calling on Jesus to release them from the bonds of Rome. They were, in essence, declaring their allegiance to him and they declared that they were putting their hope in him to free them from Roman domination. You know, people still cry out to be released from those things that hold them captive. You know, things like addictions to chemicals and, or drugs, feelings of low self-worth, feelings of hopelessness, feelings of being unloved, feelings of being overwhelmed by the demands of life. And in various ways, many people still shout, Hosanna, save us, save me. 
But I wonder if they're really ready for the way that Jesus will save them. Are people really looking for someone to come in and conquer the issue that is confronting them, to attack forces on the outside and vanquish, the, get rid of all the hurts and pains? And usually that's kind of what people want. They want revenge, or they have a misplaced sense of, of justice. Many want a quick fix, the instant gratification. But mostly Jesus doesn't work that way. He doesn't come to conquer external forces. Instead, he comes in such a way that will bring a gentle healing, a way that will bring a lasting peace and joy to their lives, a way that will erase internal struggles that come from external circumstances. Jesus comes to forgive, to love, and to heal from the inside out. Because Jesus works this way, when some people encounter Jesus for the first time, they can be somewhat confused or disoriented. When the Lord moves in someone's heart, they often don't understand what's happening to them. Instead of revenge or material prosperity or whatever it is that they're looking for from the world, Jesus gives them something else, something much more satisfying. For example, I was in a very a similar situation a number of years ago. For two years, I felt something was stirring within me, but I didn't know what it was. I just knew that it felt very uncomfortable, and in a way, I was afraid of what it might have been. My fear was that I had been feeling a great deal of anger and rage that had built up inside of me over the years, and it was trying to find a way out. The harder I tried to, the harder it tried to come out, the harder I repressed it. I was afraid of what would happen if I looked at it and let it out. But one day, the turmoil was so unbearable, I prayed for the courage and strength to see what was going on <coughs> within me. And you know what it was? It was the loving grace and forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Jesus had been nudging me for two years to open my heart to him in a new way. And I'd been fighting it. But when I opened my heart, it changed my life. Jesus didn't hit me over the head to conquer me. He gently nudged and worked within me <coughs> until I was ready to let him in. And Jesus will do the same with you. He will gently pursue you, stirring within your heart, causing a mild sense of confusion in your life. And when the realization comes that it's Jesus Christ stirring in your heart, there will be relief, there will be joy, there will be celebration. So a lesson to be learned from that first Palm Sunday is that Jesus came to forgive, to love, to heal, he came in peace to eliminate that which destroys and to build up that which brings life. He came not with the might of weapons, but with the strength of love. And on that day, the people cried out, save us, and they seemed to mean it. But did they? Do we?